We are, this is a fake hospital here. This is a patient and he has a stomach ache and he is coming to visit the doctor. And this guy is the doctor. He's not wearing his mask very well, but um, basically this is a doctor and he is wearing a mask as well. So they're both wearing masks. Now, why are they both wearing masks? This guy says he's fine. He was tested recently for coronavirus. There's nothing going on. This guy also says he's fine, um, has no fever, has no contacts, um, and doesn't think he has coronavirus either. But they're both wearing a mask. So we're going to see what the mask can prevent. Now, there's a lot of talk about how the mask prevents stuff coming out of your face and potentially getting into the air and infecting the person you're talking to. Um, and so it's protecting quote unquote others by not letting things come out. But does it really protect you as well? So let's see what happens first with this guy wearing a mask, this guy's wearing a mask, and I'm gonna put it behind the mask, and this guy is talking, and then he's gonna sneeze, okay? So get this out of the way and He's literally sneeze, 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 sneeze. I have such a bad cold. This is terrible. You see what's falling on the ground. So if I get this bad enough, it kind of like collects behind the mask and ends up on the ground. So that's what would happen if this guy was sneezing at him. Okay. So now I'm gonna be like, his mask is okay, but it's not completely perfect. And he's sneezing. And let's see if this was a little closer and he's sneezing. Oh, he's sneezing. <laughs> Some of it might get from around the mask and get in that area, but not very much, right? So you see, there's a few drops there. And that was from literally like, uh, the guy's sneezing so hard he's practically vomiting, right? But that's how much it took to get a couple of those drops on the bottom of there. Okay. So now looking what happened here, we can see there's a little bit of droplets there. If we move this thing off, let's take the mask off and see if anything get, got on his face. Do you see anything on his face? So just for, for a minute, let's just take the face off for now. Just to, okay, he's not wearing a mask and he is talking to the doctor and he's like, I don't really know how long I've been sick. I don't feel great. Sneeze, sneeze, sneeze. Yeah, well, we can talk about it. Oh, you're gonna feel my lymph nodes? Oh, open your mouth and say, ah, okay, ah. Okay, fine. Any more questions? No, not really. Okay, thank you. So let's see if the mask did anything to that in terms of preventing the droplets from getting onto what would have been where the doctor's face is. And you can see it's not perfect. When we talk about viral load, it depends on how much you got exposed to. So if he'd inhaled this concentration of whatever was coming out of the patient's mouth, the chance of getting infected are much higher than if he got these little things here. So this, th this is now what it would look like if the patient was not wearing a mask and the doctor was wearing one, not an N95, just a regular mask that quote unquote doesn't do anything. The one that we wear all the time at the hospital. Okay, so it would be much better if the patient had worn a mask and this is what it would look like if he wasn't and the doctor was wearing not an N95 mask, okay? okay so this guy works He's an essential worker. Let's say he works at a supermarket of your choice. I don't know, Ralph's, Starbucks, Pavilions, whatever, Best Buy, that's not a supermarket, restaurant, something. So he wears a mask. He's a little worried about being infected, especially because this is not a surgical mask and he's not sure it will protect him much but that's what his mommy made him because I'm his mommy. <laughs> anyway, just kidding. Uh, and then on top of that, to protect him, the restaurant, they said, we're gonna put like plastic plexiglass to protect you in case he's gonna, so that's on top of him. And the guy, 
So a customer comes in wearing a mask. So let's say this guy who's who just left the hospital is like, oh, I had such a lousy day. I really want to go food shopping now. I don't know when I'm going to leave home again, um, but I'm going to go shopping. So he's been wearing this mask all day. I'm going to pretend that's me. And I come up and I'm like, hi, and I really want to buy stuff. And do you have this for me? A chew, a chew, a chew, a chew. And you can see again, some of it's dripping on the floor. Is there anything that's getting on that? Can you, anything there? No. And if you move that away, let's see, is there anything that got on him? But obviously not anything at all because the plastic held, held, stopped it all. And in the meantime, not, not enough is getting around that to get him anyway. But if he wasn't wearing a mask and he's like, and there's this nice plexiglass here. It's usually about that height, right? Then it would be kind of like, hi, 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 hi. So wherever this is, that obviously prevented it. And wherever this wasn't, some of it could get around it. Now the chance of whatever is here getting into this guy's face is relatively little. It's not that much compared to all of this. Most of it will have already dripped on the floor and not be inhaled. And his mask prevented from prevented most of this from getting to his face anyway, as far as I can tell. Let's see, how does it look back there? It's pretty clean, right? Now let's say he doesn't have this thing. He went, he stepped out for a second and I said, excuse me for a second, can I just ask you a question? And he's like, I'm, I'm sorry, I had more questions for you. Okay, so let's do that again without this here for a second so that we can really get a full effect. So now he's asking the guy, really? You don't have ketchup? How come you don't have ketchup? I've been looking all day for ketchup. That's completely crazy. How dare you not have ketchup? That's really bad. I'm gonna call my lawyer, whatever, right? So, and this poor guy just had a cloth mask the whole time, which is quote unquote useless. But let's see if it was completely useless or not. So if we untie this from here and just again, see what happened with that. And as you can see, again, mostly it stays pretty clean where the mask was. Maybe a couple of drops in, not that much compared to what is out of here. Now, this is two layers of cotton and I tried to soak it and I'm looking at the back of it here and it's completely fine. There's like not, it's not wet at all here. Most of the time when the inside of the mask feels wet, it's from your own water vapor coming out of your own face. It's it's very rare that, you know, somebody's gonna cough at you so hard that any of this is actually gonna penetrate. So again, with this cotton, none of this got through the, the cotton to the other side. You guys, now this guy's been sick of wearing a mask all day. So he finally took his mask off. All of this is not really on him. His nose and mouth, which were here a second ago, you know, he's he's feeling okay. And this is uh, somebody else who just came home. So his neighbor's chatting um, with him and they've been good all day. And they're having a conversation. And the doctor says, how was your, how was your day? I hope it was all right. And the other guy answers and says, that was all right. I think I got coughed on a lot today. I mostly feel all right. How are you doing? You get the picture. Okay. And the more I talk and the more I hang out, the more I'm going to aerialize stuff. Okay, so there's a lot of concern about whether it's safe to wear a face mask. And so I figured let's just see, because I never actually tested my oxygen levels before. We wear masks all the time in the hospital for hours and hours and hours. And I'm like, whoa, I don't want to be walking around with a low oxygen level. So let me just check. I am here with my trusty pulse ox. It's wrapped around my finger. It says that my heart rate is 72 and my pulse ox is 99% right now. Anything over 95 is normal. Is this is the kind of thing we use every day for operations. Like if if I'm doing a procedure, um, I could be wearing this for you know 12 hours or whatever, basically all day in the hospital. Um, so I'm wearing it and I'm talking. And I just ran up the stairs before I came here to 
do this and my pulse sucks seems okay and I feel fine there for hours and hours and hours and hours. My pulse sucks hasn't really changed. Um, I feel fine, it's a little scratchy. I don't like the heat that kind of builds up. I feel my face is kind of sweaty and a little damp now. It's kind of annoying. Um, but anyway, that's a surgical mask. Ugh. But you get used to it. And obviously my oxygen level didn't drop, so that was the bigger worry among Now, having said that, I hate wearing the N95 masks, but I have one for the patients that are actually positive for, um, you know, Ebola or coronavirus or dengue or something, but I really don't want to get into me at all. So this one has rubber and elastic bands that go around really tight so this metal bar fits really tight to my face and this is what I, I've been fitted for so headache because of the rubber bands and it messes up my hair but that's okay um, and I'm breathing through this it's easy to breathe I just don't like the pressure on my face so all the pictures you've seen of people with skin breakdown on their face or um, whatever getting headaches it makes sense right um, but what I wear on a normal daily basis is my cloth mask. And I forget I'm wearing it sometimes. Um, seriously guys, just six feet away, wear a mask, just common sense, wash your hands. That way we can keep our country going, keep our economy moving, not have people isolated and lonely at home. Um, yeah, I don't look good this way. I know it messes my hair up, but um, better ugly than dead. Okay, bye.